Welcome back, everybody. As you probably guessed from the intro today, we are going over Crimson Trace's Rapid Aiming Dots or RAD optics. Uh, there are three basic sizes, and then there's a basic version, I guess you call it. That's what I'm calling it anyway, and then a pro version of each. So we're going to try to walk you through all the different details of the different options, because I do like that they give you lots of options, and they certainly do that. Um, but the smallest one here is this guy. It's the RAD Micro. And then this next step up here is the RAD Pro. It's sort of Trichicon RMR type size uh, optic. And then they have the RAD Max Pro, which is this one here, which is obviously much larger, kind of intended for shotgun and rifle use and uh, we will walk you through each of these different ones do some drop testing that I know you guys will like and basically go over what we think of them overall now full disclosure before we uh, get into all that Crimson Trace did send these out they have absolutely no say in what I say I can say whatever I want they don't get to preview this video they didn't pay me to make this video or anything like that so that is I guess my relationship with them uh, I always say whatever I want and the drop test does what it does so we shall see on that end but before we get into all that I want to thank today's sponsor and that is the Sonoran Desert Institute for folks that don't know they offer a couple of different degree programs and are a way that you can get into the firearms industry whether you want to be a gunsmith own a gun store work at a gun store work for a firearms company whatever the case may be Sonoran Desert Institute can help you do that they're also uh, GI Bill approved for those of you guys who are vets out there so again thanks to SDI for sponsoring the video. Now let's check these things out. Before we get into each individual optic, just some things that they all have in common. Number one is that they're made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. It does have that good anodized finish on there for corrosion resistance and those sorts of things. Additionally, our uh, rad here is going to fit doctor style footprints. So pretty much any of the optics ready systems out there have something for a doctor. Uh, that is what it will fit in the future. I'm told they're going to have RMR compatible versions in terms of footprint. Uh, of the rad but right now they do not and our uh, Crimson Trace micro footprint is going to fit the shield RMS or the J point footprints. Another thing all the optics have in common is that it comes with a full set of mounting screws for various slides, mounts, etc. It will also come with a battery. They're also backed by their lifetime warranty. Additionally, it will come with something to zero it. This is for the micro version. They have a sort of like a mini screwdriver version for the RAD and the RAD Pro um, that comes with it for zeroing. Now on our micro here, just like all of the others, it comes with the option for a red dot, which will be a three MOA dot, or a green dot, which will be a five MOA dot. Again, that is the same across the board for all of the different optics. Both of these optics here have a 20,000 hour runtime. Both of these are the Rad Max, uh, Rad Micro Pro, I should say. Um, like I said, these do not come with a 1913 rail or anything like that. They just fit the uh, shield RMS type optics mounting systems or plates and our zeroing as you can see obviously is done here by this allen key it's not as i guess precise as the larger ones but these again are meant to be used on small compact type pistols and you can get it dialed in uh, without issue but these also have our light sensor back here at the rear so in terms of the display brightness it's going to display where you are as the shooter rather than where you're looking so there's pros and cons to that for sure but just know that going into it one thing i definitely like about it is that it has that cutout there on the rear so that way a lot of uh optics mounting plates plate systems particularly on small guns don't have a space for a rear sight so that will act like a backup rear sight on most pistols out there even if you already have one on there it's not going to hurt anything next up in their line is the rad which again is a trigicon armor size optic it used that doctor footprint both of these do come with a 1913 mount you guys have seen me using it in that configuration on my hk and it works just fine like that uh, this is a green dot version this is the red dot version so just like all the others three moa dot on the red dot five moa dot on the green dot and one thing i didn't mention earlier that i should have is that on the green dots we have 7,000 hours of battery life versus the 20,000 on the red dots and that again is across the line reason is green just draws a little bit more battery so that is what it is for those of you guys that like the green dots one thing to also point out is that on all these different mounts that you see here uh, they do have helicoils on there which I do like helicoils are great for ensuring things don't come 
come off. It's also an additional amount of strength that you don't get without it if you're just using raw aluminum to mount it. One thing that's nice about these is that it does have the top mounted battery compartment. And speaking of batteries, these will use the CR1632 battery. Um, so it's not super uncommon, but it's not as common as some of the others. Um, but again, you're still getting that 20,000 hour battery life with your red dot. Additionally, we have our windage and elevation dials there. Uh, elevation is going to be on the top. Windage will be on the side, as you can see there. Um, and then we have these little buttons here, which allow you to manually control the brightness of it. So there's two different settings, and you can switch in and out of it. Just check out your manual. It'll show you how to do it. But on these, unlike the smaller versions, your auto sensor is actually facing forward. So if you're in a dark room and you're shooting out into a well-lit yard or something like that, um, then it will actually adjust the brightness based on where you're shooting. My personal preference is that if you're gonna have anything auto adjusting to have it that way, um, because it just works better in the practical sense. That's my opinion anyway, it is what it is. However, you can also control it manually if you want to. Now with the actual rad, which I don't have in front of you right now, uh, it does have an auto shut off as well after eight hours of being on and then it also has a manual on off so you can work it either way but with the rad pro we have our motion sensor on there so let's, both of these are the rad pro and they have motion sensors on there so that way it will automatically shut off to conserve battery life if it is not used uh, for a period of time but any kind of movement like say you're concealed carrying or something like that with it, it'll constantly be on as long as you're carrying it. Both of these are IPX7 waterproof as well, so you get a good seal on there. You don't have to worry about, you know, walking around in the rain if you're carrying it, hunting with it, whatever the case may be, that it's going to go off because of water. Everything is sealed up nice and tight. Lastly, we have the biggest option. This is the Rad Max, and this is the pro version of it. But the Max obviously is larger. It comes with a co-witness, absolute co-witness mount. Uh, I should also add that that is available for the Rads as well, but this does come with it from the factory, just like these low mounts come with it from the factory, and the low mount is available as well for this optic. 3MOA dot, because this again is the red version. And with the Max that we have there, we do have the motion sensor, as well as the ability to manually control it. It has both and additionally if you want to put it into auto mode again it's going to have that front facing sensor so again say you're shooting from a bright room into a dark window it's going to be adjusted to that so that way it's not blooming out in that particular situation or in the reverse situation if you're shooting out into a well-lit area or you're using a weapon light it will be bright enough for where your optic is oriented. Now one thing just kind of to point out here, because we're going to show you the drop test here in just a second, you'll see one of the ways that they tried to reinforce this top mount here is to add that ridge. Uh, those angles there do make it stronger. The ridge is much larger and much stronger here on the Max Pro because they have the option to do so simply because it is a larger optic. So with that, let's check out how the actual rad does being dropped from my Glock 19 MOS. Got the Rad Pro mounted up on the G19. We'll do some sort of one-handed manipulations replicating a failure drill uh, off this piece of wood here. And we'll sort of see how it does, how it stands up. Of course, it is on an MOS system, which is not the greatest, to say the least. Sort of missed the first one. Unlikely that you'd ever do that many <laughs> in the course of a day. Um, but as you guys can see here, the front there is holding up fine. The auto illumination piece is just fine as well. Do another one just for safety's sake, if you will. And the zero is just fine. So in terms of that, can't be mad. Now for the test that many of you guys have probably been waiting on, the chamber is empty. And we have how many rounds? 15 rounds in the magazine. So basically a full gun, obviously the TLR1 on there, adding some weight as well. Shootsteel.com plate, and we are going to drop it intentionally right on the hood. Let's check it out. That was definitely a full hit. Now, I'm guessing you guys will have a hard time seeing this, just the way cameras focus but it definitely cracked it for sure. Is it still usable? Well, I don't know. All right, we still have our dot. Uh, you know, no issues with that. Let's see if it actually is zeroed. Still zeroed. 
anybody who's watched optic tests here on the channel knows that that was probably going to happen. Uh, there's really not a lot of open emitter optics out there that are not going to crack, but it didn't lose the zero. So that certainly is good if it happened, which again, that's probably a worst case scenario type of thing, falling onto an extraordinarily high, hard surface from, you know, my shoulder height, I'm six feet tall and directly onto it. Odds are pretty good. That's not going to happen naturally. Regardless, uh, I'm going to drop it here just in the dirt. This is like some clay. Sorry if the wind is coming through and see if the, that does any damage to it. I suspect it won't, but we will see. That's why we do it. It's exactly the same as it was, no additional cracking. Now I'm gonna drop it again onto the plate because I know you guys like seeing destruction and mayhem. <laughs> but honestly, again, if you guys watch the channel here a lot, uh, outside of the RMR, that's done as well as just about anything out there uh, to date that we've tested. Another nasty hit. And this time I think we got failure. Well, I don't know, the dot's still there. You guys can see here, if my camera will focus, we had a piece of glass come off, but 100%, I can absolutely see the dot through the rear. So we'll see if it stays zero. Seems to be zeroed. Obviously the optic itself is damaged and we'd be calling Crimson Trace support, but in the moment, definitely can still get your hits on target. I filmed that drop test a few days ago, so I believe I said out there at the range that it did pretty well. That may be surprising to folks who are new to optics here, um, but whenever I review any type of pistol-mounted optic, I always do that drop test, and every single open emitter uh, style of optic I've ever tested, with the exception of the RMR, has failed that in terms of the glass actually breaking. That said, most of them fail it worse than the Crimson Trace did, and the reason for that is the optic was still perfectly usable. Um, it may have looked funny, but I was able to it hits on target as you guys saw and a lot of other red dots when the glass cracked or in some cases has completely fallen out uh, I wasn't able to still use the optics so in this case should it happen in an emergency situation which is pretty much worst case situation that would never really happen in real life to drop something from whatever five and a half feet onto steel directly <laughs> with a loaded gun um, but should that happen you're still able to continue to fight and then of course Crimson Trace has a lifetime warranty so send it back to them they'll send you a brand new one and go on with your life so uh, in terms of reliability, how have these optics been? They've been fantastic. I attended one of the classes out at the gun site. I believe there were 16 uh, of these out there and none of them went down in any sort of way during that class firing hundreds of rounds. I, at this point, I have thousands of rounds uh, on guns wearing these optics. I've had zero reliability issues of any kind, no flickering, no nothing like that. So uh, in that regard, they've been very good. In terms of price point, that's always something that's going to be important. So for our little micros here, uh, I believe they're 200 this is MSRP. So street price may be different. The micros here are going to be, I believe, 225 to 250 depending on the standard versus the pro. And then our rad here, same thing. I believe it's 399 for the standard and then 499 for the pro. And the exact same pricing is true on the max. Rad max is 399 to 499. So that is the MSRP on them. It's very competitive with everything else out there and like I said they've been reliable I haven't lost zero on any of them anything like that and uh, I think with that that's probably it in terms of the information you guys need to know about these optics if you have any questions that I didn't cover though definitely let us know down below in the comment section you can also check over at my social media accounts here and ask those questions if you guys think you're following me on Instagram you're probably not because I've lost over the years anyway, over 400,000 followers. So the current one is here on your screen because they keep deleting my accounts for no reason. So there is that anyway. Uh, if you guys like this type of video and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel uh, and you are subscribed and you hit the notification bell, you can sign up for my email list here on your, at the website rather here on your screen. And that will go out at most once a month Generally speaking, it's every other month, and it has all of the emails, sent, or rather, all of the videos since the last email went out. So that way, there's no giant social media algorithm censoring your eyes for my content. I'm also over on Rumble if you guys want to check that out as well. 
and we have a daily deals email as well at the website here on your screen. As the name indicates, it's daily deals. So uh, about six of the best deals I find around the internet go into that every day and it goes BFR from me to you. There's no social media giant censoring it. And uh, if it's in that email, it's the cheapest I know of for that product, whether it be ammo, optics, guns, whatever the case may be. It's the cheapest I know of on the internet at that time. So it saves you guys some time looking around. It saves you guys some money as well, hopefully with the good prices. So with that, I think we'll close the video out. Thank you guys very much much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.